This is going to be called Alternator 101, and what we're I'm going to demonstrate to you tonight is the ability to convert an alternator into a motor. Specifically, we're going to convert it into a special type of motor called a stepping motor. Uh, I chose this particular alternator. Uh, it's uh, off an old Chrysler. I uh, bought a brand new one uh, just because it's easier to work on and take apart. This particular alternator does not have a regulator in it, which was uh, a piece that I didn't need, so I did, didn't have to make too many modifications to this device, and I'll go over the, the changes that I made in the alternator itself. In order to control this particular device, I decided rather than to start out with using uh, some sort of a stepper motor chip, to go ahead and have a little bit more flexibility where I could actually do some experimenting with uh, how much torque I'm generating and, and so forth by being able to modify my pulse widths and frequency. So I basically developed uh, a little application in Visual Basic that drives the parallel port on my laptop. And the output of the, of the uh, parallel port is uh, goes to a breadboard where I have some additional circuitry uh, to drive the high current MOSFET uh, devices that are required to step the alternator. And you can see that here is a very simple application. It's, it's actually running right now. You can see the position, uh, which is basically the coil that's energized at that particular time. I have it running with an interval of a thousand uh, milliseconds and I also have the ability to change the pulse width, the percentage of uh, whatever the uh, interval happens to be. The breadboard itself, you can see here the cable that's actually coming over from the computer and is fanned out. It's just the printer port. You can actually see right now it's running uh, and stepping uh, from one coil to the next once a second. You can also see right here, this is a um, about a 50 or 60 amp MOSFET, uh, in, in channel MOSFET device. It's one of three uh, that are required to make the alternator actually step. If we look at an actual schematic of the alternator, give you a little bit better idea of what we're fixing to do when we actually test this. On the, on the armature, I'm going to go ahead and apply with a power supply. I'm going to uh, apply some current, field current, to the, to the armature and actually energize that and convert it into a magnet. I'm going to put about 2 amps, uh, which requires uh, about 5 volts DC. The only thing that I actually did to the alternator is that I came off the center tap location here of all three phases of this device and brought out a wire. And that actually becomes my common, or B+. plus. These diodes that were in there, I was able to actually just leave them in there without really doing anything to them because on this particular alternator, this point right here is tied to the case and I'm basically isolating the case and not tying ground to it. So I just left these diodes dangling. And I turned around and, and actually looped these diodes back to my plus side so that they would act like catch diodes and suppress the EMF that's, that's always generated when you pulse a coil. So with that said, uh, let's just go ahead right now. We'll. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn on, the, put about two amps onto the uh, field winding, and I'm going to go ahead and energize another 5 volt power supply at high current. You can see that it's generating quite a bit of torque, and at this time I'm going to go ahead and, and change the interval from 1,000 milliseconds, I'm going to drop it down to 100.
So this is lesson one. I, I plan to um, put some more information up on YouTube. It'll give some specifics about exactly how to uh, do this, including disassembling uh, the alternator if, if someone really feels that's necessary.